Hi everybody, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to an as assemble an automata and how to get the cams to interact with the follower rods. Um, I have all the files already made and set up in a folder, so if you don't already have these then make sure that you have them ready. But we're going to be going through uh, placing files in an, in an assembly uh, using a make constraint, insert constraints, and uh, transitional constraints. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to open up a new assembly file in Inventor. And I'm going to start off by placing my automata assembly that I've already made. Um, right now, I don't really like the orientation of this. It's not quite correct. Um, so I'm just going to manipulate my view cube so it's at the orientation that I want. I'm going to right click on my view cube and then set current view as home. Um, and then that way, I can come back to this at any point in time. Now, if I go back to place, I am going to select my follower and my guide. And I'm going to place three of these in my assembly. Go back to place, and now I'm going to put in an axle handle. And I'll go ahead and put in uh, just one cam as an example. All right. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to constrain the axle handle to the box. Um, but before I do that, I want to ground this box so it doesn't move anywhere. So go ahead and right click on this assembly and check grounded. This makes sure that it's locked in place um, and you won't have any issues in your assembly and your view will remain consistent throughout your, your assembly here. So I'm going to start off by going to constrain and I'm going to use the insert constraint. What I want to do is I want to insert my axle handle so it's the end is touching that part to here. Now you might need to flip the solution, which is totally fine. Um, I want my axle handle to be on this side just so it's easily accessible. But the insert constraint here allows you to rotate this freely. So go ahead and check that out and make sure that works in your assembly. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put all three of my guides in place. So again, go up to constraint. I'm going to use the insert constraint. And I'm going to constrain this bottom circle to here. Apply. My bottom circle again to here. Apply. And then my last bottom circle to this piece. When you're working with the insert constraint, I think it's really helpful to think about which faces you want or faces or edges you want touching each other and uh, figure out what the relationship is going to look like from there. Now, with my three follower rods, I have added in a work axis that I'm going to use to constrain these different pieces. Um, if you want to add a work axis yourself, I will demo how to do that now. Um, all you need to do is in the physical object, uh, just go to your 3D model tool. Um, and you have this option here for work access. You can just click on that icon, click on the cylinder, and it'll go ahead and add a work access for you. So when I'm back in this assembly, I'm going to go to constrain. And here I'm going to use the mate constraint. So I'm uh, constraining two opposing sides to each other. If I click on the axis of one of my followers and constrain it to the axis of one of my guides, that's going to stay in place. So notice that I can move this up and down freely. It doesn't move left and right. Um, it's constrained right into that space. I'll do the same thing again with my final two followers. So axis to axis, apply. Axis to axis, apply. All right, so once you're done with that part, I like to move my follower rods out of the way, um, just so they're a little bit easier to work with. Now I'm ready to start working with my cams and constraining those. I'm going to demo with one cam uh, with one follower rod. My recommendation when you're putting this all together is do each step sequentially. Um, don't try to constrain each cam uh, separately. I think it's going to be a, a big time waster. So as you can see here with my uh, eccentric cam that I made, I added a work axis, um, I added a mid plane, 
and I added another work plane going through the center here. Uh, these three components are going to be really important when you're adding them into the assembly. So the first thing that I want to do here is I'm going to constrain the center axis of my cam to follower rod and apply that constraint. Um, this allows my cam to move freely ar along the axle rod while also spinning. Um, however, I need to make sure that this location is locked in place. So if you can see here, I have a mid plane on my follower. Um, I want to apply a make constraint between the mid plane of my cam and the mid plane of my follower. So once I apply that constraint, um, this is no, no longer going left and right. It's only going around the axle handle. So notice that when I move my axle handle, the cam currently doesn't move with it. So what I need to do next is I need to constrain this second work plane, the slightly smaller one, to the work plane of my axis handle. So I'll go to constrain, work plane, the axis handle, and say apply. So now as I rotate my axle handle, my cam moves with it. And now we're ready for the final piece. Before you move it further, um, my recommendation is to make sure the work planes that you're currently working with are hidden. Um, I've run into a couple of glitches applying the transitional constraint when work planes are still visible. Um, so just be aware of that. So if I hover over my follower rod here, we see the highlights over in my browser. So I'm going to go over to my follower rod. I'm going to take my three work planes and right click on them and uncheck visibility. I'll do the same thing with my axle handle and hide that work plane. And then finally, I'm going to go to my cams and I'm going to hide my two work planes there. Great. So I have a clean slate here that I'm working with. And now it's time to apply the transitional constraint. Um, to access it, you're going to go to constraint, go up here to the third tab that says transitional. And this is going to allow me to constrain my follower, the curved surface of my follower, to the cam itself. Now, a really important component here is there is an order of operations. You must click the bottom of the follower rod first before you click the cam. If you do it opposite, um, it's not going to work. So I have my transitional constraint clicked. I'll click on the bottom of the follower rod, click on this outside profile of the cam. We say apply. And now we should see our cam interacting with that follower um, and our follower moves up and down. So you can do this with the remaining two followers that you have here. Um, you can do it with any shaped cam. The transitional constraint also works with cams that have uh, rougher or linear surfaces. So you shouldn't run into any problems with that as long as you're following that order of operations. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. And if you want to see how to um, adjust the angles of the cams so they rotate at different points, um, please go ahead and check out the next video. Thank you so much.